see. Looks like everything's good. Man, my computer was tripping out. I uh, recently had my, my computer crashed and the hard drive wouldn't load properly and I've had some files act funky on it. I'm trying to, anyways, uh, middle of building a really nice computer um, that'll help alleviate all of these problems. Um, but uh, until then, it's a little struggle. It's become a process. It takes me like 20 minutes just to go live now with the thumb, thumb thumbnails and stuff. So I apologize for that. Um, didn't go live Sunday because, you know, whatever. Tried to go yesterday, but... Uh, Jeez, um, but I'm going live today. So, uh, hello everybody. Um, so, uh, this stream I wanted to, uh, talk about, um, kind of the conversation that needs to be had before people buy Bitcoin. Now I get, uh, asked all the time. Um, people ask me, uh, Hey, you know, should I buy X, Y, Z coin or, or whatever? And, um, and they'll ask me, how do, how do I do it? How do I buy, you know, Luxo, for instance? I've been talking about Luxo a lot. How do you buy Luxo? Um, and it's not as simple as... Um, well, I don't know if that volume's too loud. Um, it's not as simple as just, like, putting your card and buying it, right? There's a process behind it. But there's also things you need to know about the industry, I guess, before you hop into it. So um, that is uh, what I'm going to um, do today. So um, kind of talk about everything I feel like you should know before you end up getting into into Bitcoin. Um, for those people who aren't familiar with it, you know, I've been in this industry for five plus years now. Um, I almost said religiously. Uh, I don't really like that word anymore for some reason, um, especially when not talking about religion, right? But um, that I, I just, every single day, it's it's... Like, I have dreams about it. Like, I'm a, such a nerd. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things you should know. This place is crazy. And by the way, there's no help anywhere. I don't know how people get help. How do people get, figure this stuff out? Um, I just don't understand. I've had to, like, scrape and grind to, like, uh, uh, figure all this stuff out. And, uh, and now it's fairly simple, but it took me a while to get here. So we're going to go over that. But if you're new to this uh, channel, just know I do these streams at least once a week. I'm going to try to do them multiple times a week. Um, and uh, I go over different subjects, different topics. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, you can hop into um, any of my live streams. And by the way, I normally do every single Sunday. Sometimes like right now it's random. Uh, I, I will just hit the bell notification. Uh, that would be the best way to, to get all, get me on, right? But, uh, um, sorry, I'm pulling up my, my agenda. I'm kind of sidetracked. There we go. Um, oh wait, you actually see my little folder in here. <laughs> um, so... Uh, if that end, if you are new to the space, I kind of try to make videos towards you guys. However, the longer I'm in this space, the harder it is for me to remember what it is to be brand new. Um, but I have a lot of conversations with people brand new, so I, I understand your guys' struggles. So, uh, but yeah, if you know anyone who wants to get into it, I, this channel will always be free. I'm never going to charge. All the, I'll have programs and stuff like that. Um, you know. I, uh, eventually I have people say, well, you're going to have to charge. What are you going to do? Like just spend 24 seven talking to people. You won't even have enough time then. Cause there'll be so many people. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but, uh, I don't like people that charge people for programs. I'll, I'll give information for free. Right. Um, the only thing I can ever see myself charging for in the future is like my time, right? People want one-on-ones and stuff like that, but um, but I want a place that anyone can go and just get information for free. And on that note, inside the, the, the description, there's a Discord server. server. I'm, I'm just starting it up, so bear with me. It's, like, not even really set up yet. But I want a place where, like, if you are if you are experienced in crypto, I'd like a place where I can, you know, make admins and whatever and have a bunch of places where people can go and ask questions. So, um, but yeah. So, um, now I'm not going to necessarily talk about how to buy Bitcoin, the steps, because uh, I've talked about that in, in videos prior. In fact, uh, if you look at this Uniswap video, um, I show how to buy Bitcoin in the beginning. It's about Uniswap, but I show how to buy Ethereum and Bitcoin from Crypto.com's wallet, Crypto.com's app wallet, not their website. It's hard to... But anyways, um, 
but I'm more so want to talk about what we should talk about before you end up buying Bitcoin. So I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. It's hard to do that though, but, uh, but yeah, so first of all, people need to understand what Bitcoin is, right? A lot of people think it's just like internet money, right? And they compare it to gold. So it's like gold, but for the internet. But what does that even mean? It's gold for the internet? Like, what does that mean? What is gold for the internet? I would say NFT is like gold for the internet, right? When people think about gold, they're like, gold means means like, you know, people, um, you know, who are in the crypto space, when they think about gold, they think about, you know, um, I don't have anything against gold, by the way. I just, uh, <laughs> It's just funny. There's a guy named Peter Schiff that loves hating on Bitcoin and he's a, he loves gold. So it's just really funny to make fun of gold. Kind of only because of him. I don't have anything against gold, actually. He's just funny. Um, but uh, the reason why they do that is because gold has a limited supply. Bitcoin has a limited supply. Bitcoin was made on the internet. So get gold for the, you know, the internet gold. <laughs> I guess that's how they came up with it. But really... And I could go on on what Bitcoin is for hours because it's it's a technology and there's just so much behind it. It's it's I feel like it's like me trying to explain to you what the Internet is before AOL and Netscape came along. Right. When it was nothing. Right. It was like people like, dude, I can just pick up a phone and talk to somebody. Why do I need to type letters on a screen? I can just fax it, too, by the way. I can just write it down. That's quicker. Right. Like, I don't. Why, why do I have to, like, connect? dial up now i have to like take forever these loading screens I, like there's no point of that the internet seems stupid because the first use case was email by the way right first use case of crypto was money which is bitcoin so i think the crypto ecosystem is, is so vast there's so much to talk about but i want to talk about bitcoin specifically and really if i want to break bitcoin down as simple as possible all it really is is a decentralized it's so much more, actually. <laughs> I was going to say decentralized ledger, which is kind of a portion of it. But all it really is, is they have found a way to take the banking system that we currently have and make it digital and get rid of all the unnecessary fluff. Right. Um, and be able to program that money. So we programmed. I say we because I, I don't know. Everyone who's in Bitcoin considers himself the part of the project. Um, decided to make a limited supply. So there's a little, as, as people say 21 million, it's actually barely under 21 million coins that you'll end up getting. So there's only going to be 21 million coins in existence. So people program the money that way. By the way, they can program it to say they want a billion coins in existence. Now, why don't they just do that? And why would that be, people could just destroy Bitcoin that easily, then why is it popular? Well, it's code. So in order to change it, the code has been written in a way that were, it's by the way, people say 51%, it's way more than 51%. Uh, I believe in order for them to take on Lightning Network, um, which you guys might even know what that is, it was like a majority, like over 90% of the people, oh, voted against the uh, Bitcoin cash fork actually. So um, sometimes it's a huge majority needs to, but, but essentially if there needs to be a change in the network, a lot of people have to agree on it. And if you agree to add 100 million Bitcoin, it's going to devalueize the money and it's going to make Bitcoin pointless because the reason why it's popular is because of that 21 million it has a limited supply, right? So all it really is, is code. And they wrote, they made a currency that can do a lot more than currency, but they made a currency on the internet and it's all code. And so that's all it is. They were able to take like the United States dollar or the Euro, they were able to digitize it, put it on the internet kind of. And instead of having any banking systems and servers and employees, it's all software now. And if there becomes any problems, the people who run the software get together, they, f they figure out how to fix it. They write code, they vote on it and they implement it. Um, and so it's democratized current, it's a democratized economy, which is really nice. Um, so that's why Bitcoin is so popular. Uh, well, why we have banks? So why do we even need that? Well, yeah, we do, and the United, anyone watching this video does, but you're part of the one third of the world that has a bank. Um, two thirds of the world don't ha doesn't have a bank, right? I know even people that don't have banks now, right? They go they go cash their checks, they do construction or whatever, and they go to the, a check place and they cash their checks there, right? Um, so, um, so yeah. Um, Bitcoin is is gonna stay, I believe, and um, and 
Now that being said, um, it's still very brand new. Now it is a trillion dollar market cap, but when it comes to currency, that's not very much. Um, when we have quadrillions of dollars in derivative markets alone, right? When we have, there, it's estimated to be over a quadrillion dollars, right? Um, people look at Bitcoin, they think of it as a company. Well, Amazon's not even too, tr is, you know, is it bigger than Apple or Amazon? You're looking at it like a company and it's not a company, right? It's a, it's a currency plus a lot more. Right now it's being used as a currency slash store of value, but it will eventually, you will be able to do millions of transactions per second. It will be used as real money. It will also be used as a store of value, both, which is crazy. And so many people will be using it that it'll have trillions of dollars of market cap, I believe. Sorry, Bitcoin doesn't have a trillion dollar market cap. The entire crypto ecosystem has like $2 trillion. But I think Bitcoin will eventually have multiple trillion dollars worth of, I mean, not just, uh, not just, uh, you know, 10, 11 trillion dollars to match gold, um, but much, much more, right? So, um, yeah. Now, I don't think Bitcoin is going to take over the world economy or whatever. I, I just think it's going to be a currency. You have the United States dollar, uh, you have the euro, you have the peso, you have the Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin can be used by anybody that has access to the internet. So it is the currency of the internet. Because like I said before, two thirds of the world is, are unbanked. So now those two thirds of the world people can now be banked. Now I can pay somebody in Uganda for a purse that they made. They, they ship it to me and now I pay them in Bitcoin. They don't have to do anything with, all they need is access to the internet. And now they can be their own bank. They have a, a Swiss bank in their pocket. Right. For those of you unfamiliar with crypto, well, um, the worst I, I can make 12% interest off of my dollar on a year. And I, and I think that's gross, not gross. Actually, I think it's pretty good, but there's better options for me. Let me ask you guys this. Do you guys get paid? <laughs> I just talked, I just talked to somebody who's from Iraq or, um, Iran or, uh, oh man, where'd she say she was from? Um, anyways, they get 30% interest on the dollar. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, uh, on a yearly basis. And I was like, I wonder if that's because your economy is inflating its dollar so much. It's losing its value so much that you need that, you know, because with us, obviously in the United States, if you get like 2%, it's like mind blowing. The best I've ever seen in any kind of promotion, I think was in the high 2% range. Um, you can't get 12% back, right? Uh, but you can do it with crypto. Why? Because banks are allowed to do that. Banks can make that money off of your money, but you can't because you're not good enough. Uh, you're too poor and not worth it. That's the way I look at it. If you were worth it enough, if your life was worth it enough um, to this country, to the economy, to banking systems, right? You would be allowed to do that. Your country, um, big businesses, big banks, you uh, your your congressman right they have built a system where you're not allowed to do that you're not responsible enough that's why they don't trust you because you're not you're not responsible enough to handle your own money that's legit what it is people don't think about this but you know you can't just like i i was once doing some stuff in china where i was doing a lot of alibaba stuff and doing some stuff from amazon years ago back when it wasn't the norm and people were asking me, I had my, I actually got kicked out of one of my banks because after like 45 minutes, I just got mad. And I was like, dude, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't care that you want to know what I did with my money. I'm done talking, you know, and they're like, well, you have to answer us or we're not going to. And so they kicked me out of the bank because I wouldn't tell them where every dollar I spent. Okay. You, you withdrew this money. Who'd you give it to? And all of a sudden I was like, are you kidding me, dude? Is, is that any of your information? And what do you want me to say? And I just started making up horrible things. I was like, obviously that's what I did with it because that's what you, what you, is that what you want me to say? <laughs> like, what do you think I did with it? Um, you know, like, look who I paid. It's a manufacturing company. What, what do you think? Like, I'm sorry. They're not in your books. <laughs> like they're in Alibaba's website. Go check it out. Anyways. Um, so there's a big use for Bitcoin and, uh, the reason I guess like, um, right. The purpose of, of Bitcoin is huge for people that don't have banks. 
um, and people that don't want a, an economy that's deflating in value. People say, oh, well, what's the highest you see a Bitcoin? I don't see a highest. Here, here's my answer. The more that the dollar keeps printing, the higher Bitcoin can go. That's my answer. So stop printing the United States dollar. Then I could start thinking about a cap on Bitcoin. That's never going to happen. So, yeah, the answer was was eight trillion to match gold a few years ago, and a couple of years ago it was nine trillion. Last year it was ten trillion. This year it's eleven trillion. So Bitcoin's was uh, at a you know five hundred thousand dollar coin to match gold. Now it's like five hundred fifty, five sixty, eighty. I don't know something because the economy keeps rising. So dollars keep printing, and in order for hey, oh you guys want to do something crazy, do this. Don't look at the stock market. Oh my gosh, this would be a great video. I'm going to do a video on this. Don't look at the stock market in comparison to fiat currency. Instead, flip it and compare the the stock market towards the to the value of gold. That would be a devastating chart because let me guys ask you this question. What holds value and what's worth more? The United States dollar or gold, which one would you say? Is it better to hold gold long-term or is it better to hold the United States dollar fiat currency long-term, right? Everyone's gonna say gold, gold holds more value. Now, so if gold is more valuable and it holds its value better, then why are we comparing a stock market to a currency that's inflating? Yeah, of course the stock market's doing good. Hey, why don't we pump we have, we're already $30 trillion in debt. Why don't we pump 30 trillion more into the stock market? Now our entire country is doubled in worth overnight. Isn't that how it works? No, right? So as, as much as they keep printing the currency, that's how much, that's how high Bitcoin can go because you're comparing Bitcoin to the dollar. Now one Bitcoin is always gonna be worth one Bitcoin, right? And that's hard for people to wrap your head around, but I'll just say it again. One Bitcoin will always be worth one Bitcoin. One Bitcoin will be worth different for the United States dollar because the dollar will just keep on inflating, right? Um, so yeah, now here's the deal. When people say, great, now I wanna buy it. Where do I go? What app do I buy? What app do I download? This is when a, a conversation needs to happen because first of all, um, I recently, um, I had uh, someone reach out to me, someone who actually downloaded the Bitcoin wallet and then someone who downloaded the Bitcoin wallet and and bought $5,000 worth of Bitcoin cash thinking it was Bitcoin. Um, I'm not sure if they actually did or not. They almost did. I don't know, I haven't quite found out. But they, this, is, this is what they were gonna buy, Bitcoin cash, because someone told them that's the real Bitcoin. And now here's the deal. Someone could have, that could have not have been a lie. That could have just been misinformation because someone who believes the Bitcoin cash is really the Bitcoin, they actually believe that. And so is it a lie? I don't think it's a lie. It's just they're dumb enough to believe that. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to say dumb. That's rude. They're, they just were conned. It's not the real Bitcoin, sorry. BTC is the real Bitcoin. So let me just get this straight. You should tell everybody, right? Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin diamond, Bitcoin cash, Bitcoin Satoshi vision, Bitcoin, you know, Doge, Bitcoin, um, awesome sauce, Bitcoin, Mars coin, Bitcoin, you know, whatever name of the coin is, it's not Bitcoin. The only Bitcoin is called Bitcoin, just Bitcoin. Sorry, I said my mic. Um, now the, the ticker is BTC. Now here's an easy way to remember that. Just go to coingecko.com. By the way, write this down if, you, if you've never been here. This is like, I go here every single day. This is when I research a coin, I, the very first step always is coingecko.com. Then great, coingecko, then I type in the coin, right? And then I and then I great, then I great. Now I know what the So, for example, Luxo, if I wanted to look, then great. Now I know the project, I know what it's worth, I know circulating supplies, I I uh I know the charts, I know um you know, I can hit markets. I know what exchanges I can buy the coin on. So anytime you want to know about any project, um, right? Oh, cool. XRP, right? They just paid a hundred million dollar fine and now they can be a currency again. By the way, I see XRP going to, oh my gosh, it's over a buck. Um, 
I see this going to four bucks pretty quick, by the way, just because of what happened recently. Um, so I'm not saying I like it, by the way, <laughs> just saying I see it. I see it pumping pretty, pretty significant. And four dollars is not even my high ceiling. I see it going pretty high. Four dollars was its all time high. It's been in a lawsuit being sued by the United States. That's why it hasn't been pumping. Now they just settled it and now they're not being sued and they can continue operating, which is a bullish sign, right? So I, I would assume that this is going to pump here pretty heavy. And by the way, because of that too, um, a lot of money got dumped into the whole, we just hit $2 trillion for the first time as the crypto ecosystem. As soon as it loads, you'll see up here. Um, but anyways, when people ask me what projects say, you know, how do I find this coin? Go to coingecko.com, hit the search bar and uh, find it there. Um, now, um, yeah, see there it is. Two trillion dollar market cap. Sixty six hundred coins listed on two at least two exchanges. There's been over a quarter million coins. By the way, there's been like two, three, four, five hundred thousand coins created, and there's sixty six hundred on at least two exchanges. Just to show you how many of these companies have died. So, um, so yeah, the real Bitcoin. Here, here's the answer to that. Because now I don't think this is going to happen, but I'm just saying one day I could say this right here is not the real Bitcoin. And here is what will happen that will make me say that. And th this is what it is. Uh, right here. Um, or actually it's well, hash rate, but that will, uh, that will, um, ha the hash rate will end up creating the market cap. Um, I mean, not because it has anything to do with the market cap and, but you know, the more people that use it, the more that the coin will pump. Um, but, but, um, essentially whoever has the, the largest market cap coin means that's who's using that coin the most. Um, and so whoever is using that coin the most will always actually hold the BTC ticker. So let me just sh tell you what's going on with these other coins that are claiming to be Bitcoin. Now I'm I'm gonna be nice and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna assume. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be nice. <laughs> so um, Bitcoin has it, it started out as the only cryptocurrency, right? They wanted to be a a, a new digital. Um, dollar that uh, had a limited supply that anybody in the world could access you know all the stuff that makes bitcoin great um and so great it started off as a penny and it went up to you know hundreds of dollars um and so all of a sudden people were like dude let's make our own coin and so all of a sudden you started seeing these forks like three years after bitcoin started doing you know start uh, launched uh, three or four years after, right? And then so all of a sudden you started seeing these other projects. You started seeing uh, Ethereum and Litecoin. Um, you saw XRP. You saw some of these coins started popping up. And um, and they didn't claim to be Bitcoin. They just came, claimed to have different visions and different things they were doing. Then all of a sudden the Bitcoin community got so big that they started disagreeing on how their projects should be run. Again, this is all done by software. There's no CEO, there's no president. In fact, if there was a CEO or president, Bitcoin would be shut down by now. Do you know how I know that? Government. Oh, okay, I thought I spelt, I thought I spelt it. I thought I spelt the M's and the N's wrong. Government. Um, so yeah. Um, I thought I'd be able to see an old article. Government trying to destroy Bitcoin? Um, okay, so Bitgold um, is named by a guy by the name of Nick Zabos. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, so he created Bitgold, which Bitcoin uses a, P a lot of uh, Bitgold software. Some people think Nick Zabos is Satoshi. I don't think he is, but... Um, I mean, you might be a part of Satoshi, right? I mean, we all are, except for Craig Wright, right? <laughs> Just kidding. If you get that high five, dude. <laughs> um, 
but uh, he created, he tried to create a, a version of Bitcoin a long time ago, but he was the creator of it. So they were able to take him into court, right? You can't do that with Bitcoin. Um, so it's all done by code. There's millions of people that run it and they have to vote on it. So eventually people are gonna disagree and that's what happened. Um, back in 2017, a bunch of people disagreed and thought that they should change the code. And uh, a lot of people didn't disagree. So because of that, a lot of people started doing a certain code and the other people were like, no, we're gonna do this code. So you can't do two codes at the same time on the same chain. So all of a sudden the software split and you had one, you had a bunch of people that were running one software and a bunch of other people that were running another software. By the way, when I say a bunch of people running software, here's what I mean. You run, you, you run a piece of program on your computer and it helps run Bitcoin transactions. That's all it is. And so because you're helping run Bitcoin transactions, the Bitcoin network rewards you with Bitcoin. And then you're like, cool, I got Bitcoin. And then you sell that Bitcoin. And now, like, who doesn't want to do that? So that's what that's what these miners are. All they're doing is help processing Bitcoin transactions, right? So, um, so yeah, um, these companies like Bitcoin Cash, for instance, uh, Roger Ver and uh, a bunch of his people, they're like, you know what? We should increase the block size. And not that you need to know what that means, but they, they were changing the code. And uh, a lot of people didn't agree. So all of a sudden the two different codes were being done and all of a sudden split Bitcoin Cash and then Bitcoin. And now the Bitcoin Cash people, a lot of them think that Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin because it's they had the original white paper of Bitcoin. Uh, that's the original code that was written. And outside of that, we don't know. You know, people liken Bitcoin to religion. They think a lot of these people are like religious freaks with Bitcoin. But let's take religious religion for a second, right? You take the Bible, it was written, you know, and then all of a sudden man came and changed it and it could have, it could have been changed over generations and verbiage and stuff like that, right? And so we don't know what the original writers meant. They wrote what they wrote and some things were kind of left in the air for us to translate, for us to figure out ourselves, right? Did they mean this or did they mean that? Same thing with Bitcoin, right? So when wrote the code, we don't know their intentions behind it. And if when problems arose, what they would have done to fix it, because they didn't know the problems at that time. So as a community, they decided we want to do this way. And the other people are like, no, we want to do that way. So all of a sudden you started seeing these splits. And by the way, there were a lot of people that just forked the coin and what all forking means, by the way, is you copy the, the code and then you run the code separately on your own network. Um, so yes, anyone can create their own Bitcoin, but you have, but you don't have hundreds of millions of dollars and trillions of, or of people and trillions of dollars worth of money backing it, right? Anyways, so when you buy Bitcoin, you're gonna find people on different trains, right? I do not think Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin. I do not think Bitcoin Satoshi Vision is the real Bitcoin. Um, I think Roger Ver and Craig Wright, they, they're just doing their, own, they're doing their own thing. They want to run the code their own way. A lot of people think it's because of nefarious reasons. They're just trying to be billionaires. They're on their own right. You know, um, I don't know about all that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so when you buy Bitcoin, uh, in this description down below, um, I have links to exchanges. Um, that is where I buy my Bitcoin from. Now, the easiest for you would be crypto.com, the app, not the website. Download the app, crypto.com. Um, because you have 14 days, you have two weeks where you can buy, sell, all you do is connect your debit card and you can buy Bitcoin, BTC, this Bitcoin. And by the way, you can put $20 in. You don't have to put 57 grand in. It's not like shares. If you had a stock of Amazon, you'd have to have the entire stock. You can buy a fraction of a share of a, of a coin. So, um, so yeah, go in and buy it, put $200, put a hundred bucks, whatever, in, into Bitcoin, BTC, and that's the real Bitcoin. Now, like I said, crypto.com, the app, for the first two weeks, it's free to do any trades. Um, after that, it's gonna cost 3%, and it's, it might change. It, it changes every few months, it seems like, but that's a lot of money. I mean, not in the sense that, you know, yeah, you, you know, you put in three grand, it's just, I, I, I guess, um, it depends on how you look at it, but what if you're putting in a, you know, a hundred, I don't know, still a hundred bucks, $3, that $3 could go towards, you're already taking a 3% hit. So now you automatically need to gain 3% just to break even, um, from what your investment is. So I just don't, so yeah, within your first two weeks, it's free on crypto.com. But then after that, I actually use Coinbase pro, not Coinbase. 
the Coinbase app costs money. Coinbase Pro, I have found, is the cheapest way to put money into crypto and to transfer it out into wallets and exchanges from there. So, but crypto... Coinbase Pro is harder to use. Again, all the links are in my description down below. Coinbase Pro is a little bit more difficult to use because it's for experienced traders, but they waive a ton of fees. So I would just say learn how to use it. That being said, if you don't care to learn how to use it, you can just use Coinbase, but Coinbase also has fees as well. And I don't know the fees versus crypto.com. I know crypto.com is the straight 3% when you deposit money and there's fees when you transfer it and transfer it out of the app and stuff. Um, Coinbase would it be the same thing? Uh, it would be fees similar, I would assume, um, but I don't know the differences. But of, of those two, now, then there's Robinhood, which I do not like. Okay, I'm pulling my money out. Uh, just know, um, I, I I need to get on board with some lawsuit or something like that because they submitted two of my trades hours after. In fact, I I happened to take a screenshot on the second trade because I was like, great, they won't even let me do a trade. And I screenshotted it. I'm sure in the Android, it has the timestamp and everything. And yet, like three or four hours later, they submitted both trades that canceled. They submitted two trades at the same dollar amount. And so, and then I didn't realize it till later. And and I was like, uh, are you kidding me, dude? Um, so, and I've been trying to withdraw my money for like a month or two now. And they will not let me withdraw it. And so I don't know what to do. So... Robinhood is the number one app there. <laughs> I think just because of what happened with the Reddit and the Wall Street bets and the GameStop fiasco that took place, uh, they're just struggling right now. Um, yeah, it, and it makes me mad. They're f they keep bragging about how they're number one. They're IPOing. They're doing all this stuff to make tons of money, yet they won't do their basic customer service help. And I don't know. So I don't like them. Um, but they are very easy to enter money in and buy Bitcoin. So I, I don't know. I, that's just my experience. I'm trying to get out of them. Um, but it could be very easy for someone to buy Bitcoin. Now, here's the deal. When you have Bitcoin on an exchange, it's never really your Bitcoin. One of the big things that makes Bitcoin popular is it's your actual money. All right. If I had a billion dollars in Bitcoin and I had it saved, and the only way that I had that password is I memorized the password, literally not a single person would ever be able to take that money. No government, no one in Bitcoin, no customer service, not even Satoshi Nakamoto himself, the creator of Bitcoin, could not reach into the system and forcible, forcibly take that money out of my wallet. That's what makes Bitcoin so powerful. It is literally your money. You think your money in your bank account's your money? No, it's not. It's not your money. First of all, the bank is gambling your money right now on risky bets. They don't care if they're going to lose it. They own the Federal Reserve. They're just going to bail themselves out. So, cool. You put in ten grand. they can now gamble $100,000 with your money at a 10x leverage. They're allowed to do that. Not you, because you're irresponsible. And uh, you're just a child. And you're not allowed to play with your own money, because you're always a child in the government's eyes. Just know that. And you think that's demeaning? Um, you, you need to think it's more demeaning because they they don't think you're responsible enough to do anything that's why everyone's on a short leash um why is it that the bank can leverage trade your money uh and fail at it and they get a bailout yet you're too irresponsible to do that yourself whatever so anyways that's the argument with the whole bitcoin cash thing but uh but yeah so i would say first Start with crypto.com, do all your money there first, and then after the two weeks, go with Coinbase Pro. Um, and then if you want to take your money out of your out of the exchange and actually hold it long term in a wallet, I would use Trezor Wallet. Um, Trezor, T-R-E-Z-O-R, -E just Google it, Trezor Wallet or Ledger Wallet. Um, uh, both of those wallets are hardware wallets and they work fine. And then I also use MetaMask Wallet. It's a, you'll see this little fox up here, actually. Um, MetaMask wallet is a uh, wallet that you can have on your computer. I actually don't even have my MetaMask on my um, computer. It's uh, it's, on, it's on my phone. I don't even know what's up here. I think it's the account I got hacked, that hacked me, actually. <laughs> I got hacked a while back. I think that's what's in here. <clears throat> um, um, I was doing stupid stuff, though. You can't just randomly get hacked, by the way. Um, I was testing out a bunch of new things. Um, 
doing a bunch of crazy stuff. So it was my fault. Um, but, uh, I mean, it wasn't my fault. It was the person who stole my money. It was their fault. But, uh, uh, I can't be too mad because I was doing things I, I, I knew I shouldn't have. So, um, anyways, um, but yeah, so that's where I end up buying it. And then, um, and then as a beginner, okay. I've never actually said this out loud because, um, people really talk trash because the reason to own Bitcoin is because you need to take control of your own money. That's the whole point. People are, government doesn't trust you with money. So you can now have a Swiss bank account in your wallet, but you can't if you leave it on the exchange because now you're giving the exchange all that power. Um, now there are some exchanges like KuCoin, by the way, I love KuCoin. <laughs> they allow you to do so much crazy stuff on their exchange. They allow you to 10X leverage trade. They allow you to 100X future trade. Um, they, they give you, you know, crazy staking rewards. KuCoin's freaking awesome. And they were hacked by the way, two or $300 million. My coins were hacked. One day, everything was registered, but everything, all my funds were restored, even though they weren't, res they weren't actually restored. They, they were still hacked, but KuCoin had a Seifu wallet. So when it comes to things can get hacked, things, crazy things can happen, but I trust KuCoin now because of that experience. Um, but Ku uh, Coinbase Pro, um, uh, and some, and, and I know other exchanges can, but I know Coinbase Pro, uh, they are like backed um, by banks as well. Now, by the way, FDIC almost means nothing federally backed by them. If you actually read the fine print and figure out what's actually backed and stuff, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, Cause like the only, the, the worst case scenario is if the bank fails, it's backed by the FDIC. But if the banks fail, then you're in a situation where all banks are failing and the FDIC isn't going to help you out anyways, but at any rate, whatever. <clears throat> um, uh, and, you know, it helps, I guess, with people stealing your credit card money or whatever. But anyways, it's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, um, I would say again, a lot of people will probably talk trash for me saying this, but if you're brand new, I wouldn't even worry about the wallet yet. There's some learning that needs to be done because if you lose your, your keys, you lose your money forever. And to be real, I think a guy by the name of Fabian Vogelsteller, who is creating Luxo, he is creating a way to fix that problem. Um, he's going to create a, something called a universal profile. And I think that problem is going to be solved in the next three months by Fabian with Luxo. So I'm kind of excited to see what that's going to come what's going to happen with that. And I'm waiting, I'm legit waiting for that. I think it's going to be mind blowing what he does. No one's, no one's even conquering that problem. I feel like the solutions are so weird and he, those solutions he talked about make so much sense. I just have no idea how he's going to do it, but you know, he has a, uh, you know, the ERC 725 token that he just created. If you guys want to Google that is, is what's going to help him do it as well as like the 1155 token, the ERC 20 token, a bunch of uh, Ethereum standards, right? Um, but that's kind of level two status, not really beginner information. So yeah, um, now let's talk about the Bitcoin problems. People talk about Bitcoin being, having a lot of problems and they're correct. Yeah. Bitcoin does have a lot of problems. It's really slow. That's probably the biggest problem. It's really slow and that'll be fixed right now. It does five, six, seven transactions per second, eight, nine, 10, 15. Maybe if you're on lightning network, maybe upwards of 20, I don't know. You don't, you need way more than that. You need tens of thousands. You need, um, I don't know, five to 80,000 transactions per second to be used as a merchant to buy coffee at Starbucks and groceries at Walmart. Um, I think a Visa does like 13,000 transactions per second, 20,000 transactions per second or something like that, but they can do upwards of like 80 or 90,000 transactions per second. Um, so. So yeah, Bitcoin is really slow. They've been working on it and I promise you, Bitcoin will be able to do thousands of transactions per second one day. And it could be five years, it could be 10 years. By the way, Bitcoin is pumping and it can't even be used as money right now. Just think about that. Bitcoin is about to hit this like $11 trillion gold matching market cap. You know, I don't think it'll hit that on this bull market, but that's what people are comparing it to, to gold. If it hit gold, it would, it would do a 10X from where it's at right now. Right. Um, this 57 would be 570,000 if it matched gold's market cap currently. So what, what if then it's now not just 
showing as gold market cap, but now it's being used as money. Whoa, now it's an economy, right? Okay, now what's that worth? But wait, it's not just money, it's programmable money. So it's not just money on the internet. It's not just, you know, it's not just money. It's, <laughs> it's not just money of the internet, right? It's internet of money, right? You're actually able to, to program the economy through the internet. It's a, it's a programmable, like, so now we got the internet with money. That's never been even done before, by the way. You can't program the economy. Um, it's it's a currency that's it's controlled and distributed by, you know, Federal Reserve, the banks, the, the government, right? Um, the treasury, right? It's, 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 but you can't program that. You can, it's all digital. There's no buildings. Bitcoin's all digital. So it's a programmable economy. So, okay, 11 trillion for gold. The internet's valued at like 20 to 30 trillion. Um, and, and we're talking about, um, so gold, 11 trillion, 20, 30, just for the internet. Uh, and then, and then a, an economy as well. Like what, where's the ceiling on this, you guys? And people are printing money. So like the, the value of Bitcoin is not going to change. You know, it's not really changing. It's the, it's the dollars that are being used to compare against Bitcoin that's changing. Right. Anyways. Um, so yeah it has problems they're being fixed so yeah big uh, the internet had problems in the late 80s early 90s too why the freak was the government spending hundreds of millions of dollars for a few professors to experiment and by the way do you know how much power that took as well how much power does the internet take how much power was the internet taking before AOL and Netscape, before it was even used by the masses? We should just shut the internet down, dude. All right? That's what people are freaking out about. Now, people now also freak out about power consumption. And this is where I used to freak out, and now I've done a 180. And I don't not freak out, but I thought it was a problem. And now I don't see it as a problem, and I see it as a benefit now. Bitcoin uses too much power. We need to go green. Uh, <laughs> okay, first of all, why do you guys give a crap about the, about, about clean air now, right? Now that it's just an excuse to hate on Bitcoin, that, that whole narrative, right? Um, because now it's just something you can hate on Bitcoin with, right? But whatever. Um, but if you look at, okay, let's, let's look at this logically. All right. I don't, I don't care about what you hear on the news. Just think about this as a person who wants to make money, okay? You're making a hundred million dollars a year mining Bitcoin. You're a miner, you mine Bitcoin. You are the reason, by the way, that you're, you're the reason the earth is getting destroyed because you're now spending all that, hundred million of that, that's all power being used. So uh, now you're this person that's evil, right? Let's just put ourselves in that this scenario. You're making a hundred million dollars a year and you're destroying our, um, you know, environment because you're getting that, that energy from coal power. Now, what if I told you that you could spend $500 million and if you spent $500 million today, your $100 million would now turn into $220 million a year. Now, let me ask you something. Are you going green or are you burning coal in that situation? You can buy that, you can pay that off in, a, in two, three, four, five, five years max. These people are, this is what's going on. So you can say, okay, you can spend $100 million on power or you can spend $300 million on solar that will cover the amount of power it will take, pay it off in three years. Now you have free power and now you're gaining an extra $100 million a year. Right. And, and this is what people are doing. They're able to build these plants. They're, they're able to take these places, these like places that are in the middle of nowhere where they would need to build like a city around. And they're able to just build a power plant essentially there to capture the energy specifically to mine Bitcoin for the economy. Okay. So 
Bitcoin is incentivizing people to go green. Is your car company doing that, right? Is Ford doing that? Is uh, the beef industry doing that? Is the fish industry doing that? Right, all these places where carbon is being pumped into the air that, you know, um, so our, so the f people use Bitcoin power as like, you're destroying the environment. Well, Bitcoin is the only um, power company that allows people, it, you're, they're paying you more money to go green than not to go green. So why would you not go green? They're incentivizing you to go green. So there's more people, if you take all the power in the world that's being used by banks versus all the power in the world being used by Bitcoin, banks are using more power than Bitcoin are um, when it comes to, and, let's, and by the way, they are using way more power, but let's just take the power consumption and match it to what Bitcoin is. Of that, we even still have more people that are um, running green energy on Bitcoin. So that's just media bullcrap. It's yes it uses a ton of energy but they're incentivized to go green and use solar wind um you know um you know use hydra um oh my gosh i'm blanking on dams right that that technology geez i'm um blanking on what it's called so um uh so yeah now let me let me also talk about the power someone's like dude there is I heard this, read this article that there's entire countries that are using less power than Bitcoin. Bitcoin using so much power, more entire countries. That's how much power is being wasted. So first of all, we've already established that they're going green, by the way. And uh, by the way, what is your power paying for? These light bulbs? What does this light bulb do? It gives you light. It disappears. You lose that energy forever. Bitcoin energy, you never lose the energy. The energy, 100% of it is being put into the Bitcoin network, which is a working economy. What about Christmas lights? You don't see anyone complaining about Christmas lights. Do you know how much waste of an energy Christmas lights are? I'd be really curious to see how much Christmas lights waste, how much is my energy is being used with Christmas lights versus Bitcoin. And then let's talk about waste of, waste of power. So... I see when people tell me Bitcoin uses more power than entire nations, here's what I heard. You you might have heard Bitcoin wastes so much energy that the entire countries could are, are using less energy. Um, what I heard was Bitcoin's network is so strong that entire nations would not be able to take their entire 100% of every single human being in their entire nation use their computing power, use their, their power to hack the network, because that's what it takes to hack power, to hack the network, entire countries couldn't even do it. That's what I heard. I just heard that the, that the Bitcoin network is getting so strong that it is becoming unhackable. It's already more unhackable than, you could hack Visa easier than the, than the Bitcoin network, just to let you know. You could hack, um, so here, it's so strong, by the way, that even if anyone did hack it, it would be seen because there's millions of people running the network and they would see this random new person coming in and taking over over 50% of the entire network within 10 minutes. You don't think someone's going to see that? So it's an open network. So yes, Bitcoin's got problems, you guys. Those problems are being fixed, just like the internet had problems in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. But you couldn't invest in it in the in the internet back then. I guess you could have in like AOL and stuff, right? But you couldn't invest in like www or FTTP um, or or HTTPS, right? You guys don't even know what that is, probably. But every time you go to www dot whatever, wouldn't it be nice if that was a growing company, the twenty thirty, um, you know, the 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 uh, uh, twenty thirty forty trillion dollars that the internet is worth? uh that could be money in your pocket right so some of that could be money in your pocket right so yes it has problems um but but congratulations what what that person that someone the person that just told you about all the problems that the bitcoin has they just essentially told you this is how early you are in bitcoin you thought you were late on bitcoin of course you're late it's fifty seven thousand dollars look at this yeah you're late dude well, I was also late at $100. I was late at 
$500. I was late at $1,200, right? Was I late? It was at a penny. It's at 57,000 right now. Well, if this is 500,000, do you think you're still late at 57,000, right? Uh, if this is $1.6 million a coin, uh, did you get in late, right? So I guess my question when people say that is, do you believe in Bitcoin? Do you believe that a democratized economy that any person in the entire world can access, it's unhackable, governments can't shut it down, um, and now it's a, a, an internet, it's a money of, it's the, it is the money of, it is, it's not only money of the internet, but it's the internet of money, right? So I would say if you're brand new to Bitcoin, hydroelectric, I don't know what that means. Oh, hydroelectric. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. I thought you were telling me to look up a coin. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, now, if you want to know what Bitcoin is and the vision behind it, there's a much better person that explains it than me. Um, just Google uh, Andreas Antonopo Antonop. Wait, O P O L O U S. I think. Anton Antonopoulos. Yeah, that's it. Um, this is Sam uh, Antonop or whatever. Uh, but just type in uh, what is Bitcoin, dude. I watch his what is Bitcoin videos. I've 30, 40, 50 times. I don't know. I've seen so many times. Even though I know what Bitcoin is, I just listen to him explain basics because he he's really good. What the f is Bitcoin? Oh, dude, I hate this London Real guy so much. He seems like the biggest piece of garbage ever. He, like, has these nice suits. It looks like his one of his videos is, like, in the back of a Bentley. Two of his people that he's put on his show are, are people I just really, really dislike. One of the guys charges people thousands of dollars to give you coins that guarantees you you put a $100 <laughs> or $1,000 in, you'll make a million dollars in it, dude. And by the way, I followed this person for years. He says it every year. None of his coins have done that. One coin did, Bitcoin, in the beginning, in Ethereum. Whatever, trash. And this London guy is his, his friend. So this is what I'm talking about. Oh, by the way, scams. I guess we haven't talked about that. Oh my gosh, dude. There's almost not a single person you can trust on crypto. But anyways, uh, yeah. Um, introduction of Bitcoin, ooh, right here. This one's my favorite. Um, I have to look at when he, where he's walking. This one is one of my favorites as well. I don't know by the thumbnail. I know by him walking around. Yo, this one's pretty good. Uh, yeah, watch these two. This one right here, Introduction to Bitcoin. This one and this one. These two are probably my favorite. Um, but if you don't know what Bitcoin is, he, he, will, he has the best vision, right? Um... So yeah, now altcoins, by the way, all these other altcoins, um, <laughs> Peter Schiff just posted a stupid tweet again. I, I, I don't know if he really, so there must be something wrong with that guy. But anyways, he's like, there's thousands of altcoins. Of course there's no cap. Um, you know, people say, you know, cause Bitcoin is, there's only 21 million coins, right? He's like, well, there's thousands of coins. You can just make a new Bitcoin. So really there's, is not more than 21 million. There's <laughs> whatever. Anyways. Um, Yes, there's thousands of coins, and most of them are trash, garbage. Out of the 6,638, probably 6,630 of them. <laughs> Maybe not that much. Probably, like, legit, though, 1% of these are probably projects that are decent, and the rest probably are, are garbage. And yet, by the way, you'll see a lot of these garbage companies will we'll do 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 800 X. It uh, doesn't mean they're a good company, um, right? I think XRP is going to do a is going to end up going to the four dollar range, right? In the next few weeks, months, I don't a couple months, I don't know, whatever. I think it will pass its all time high though. Doesn't mean I like the project. Um, so um, yeah, now all these projects are claiming to do something different. Um, you know, Ethereum is trying to do a world computer. Um, Binance is trying to. Do kind of its own thing but also be a bank and 
I don't know. XRP is trying to work with banks. Tether's just trying to be a stable coin matching to the dollar. Polkadot is trying to connect all the blockchains together. Cardano is trying to be a world computer like Ethereum. Uniswap is trying to be a decentralized um, computer. Uh, or sorry, decentralized exchange. So you don't have to, you know, it's just like you have a wallet. It's like me. It's like if I want to give you 20 bucks, I can just like, kind of like Venmo. But you can exchange currencies in Venmo. And there's no KYC. Dang, it's not like Venmo at all. Anyways, decentralized exchange. It's hard to explain what that is. People don't understand. Once you use a decentralized exchange, you'll be like, whoa. Like, I remember the first time I used, I used Uniswap, I was like, holy crap. I remember saying that. I was like, holy crap, that's all I have to do? <laughs> now, um, there's so many fees with Ethereum, but it was just like so weird. I connected my wallet and I put in the coin I wanted to buy. And all of a sudden I had the new coin in my wallet. I was like, I just made a trade. And I just hopped on this website, never been to it before. And within like 60 seconds, I made a trade and I was like, what? Anyways, I love Uniswap, by the way. Litecoin is trying to be like uh, the the cash version of Bitcoin. Chainlink's doing an Oracle, so they're verifying you know data. Bitcoin Cash, they're um, they're trying to be like Bitcoin, but Cash is <laughs> that's the fork I was talking about. Stellar, they're trying to do what XRP does, but on a decentralized manner, and they didn't screw people over like XRP did to their impl to their customers. All right, so if I, I can just go down the list, and and everyone's trying to do a little bit different of a project, um, um, and a lot of them are kind of ripoffs of the same project, right? Um, but, uh, um, most of them are trash. Um, now I can do a video. I have a video explaining how I find these gems and you know what? I might do a stream. I might stream for a couple few hours one day. And when I do research, cause I'll, I dive deep and I'll just show you from, and I, I don't know, we might not even find anything that day. But normally I have projects I'll find on Twitter. Or someone will mention something or I'll go to the website. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'll put it on the side and I'll do research. Um, but uh, but that's a whole nother ball game. Um, so yeah, all these alt, I realized I put alti. All these alti coins. Um, uh, yeah. Now the name of the game is to find when people try to find projects that pump, the name of the game is to try to find a project with the lowest market cap that you think is going to be a great company. That's what I try to do. I try to find the lowest this number where I, I when I look at the company, I see what they're doing, and I'm like, yes, I believe this company. I I I see the need. I think that people are going to do it. I believe in it. You know, and so the lowest market cap company I can think of is probably um, Luxo or Ariana. I just I just found out this. This, uh, wait, R-E, uh, R-R-E, uh, 20, R-E, uh, 20. There we go. It's called Ariana. Um, but they're about to launch their own chain, and it might be on the, the, uh, dang it, I've been trying to, I bought it at, like, $3 and something cents, and then it dropped down to the $2 range. I, I bought it, I think it was, like, 205 But, man, this gets, done. if this gets into the dollar range, anyways, uh, their market cap is actually, like, uh, 50 million. Um, mm, I could find out their market cap. I can't remember their circulating supply. Dang, I can't remember. Oh, no, it was like around 20. Like 27? 23? Anyways. Um, but yeah, so this company has it ends up having like a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollar market cap. That's pretty, I mean, I would like to see it in a 10,000 market cap, right? <laughs> but uh, that's pretty low. Normally under 10, 10 million is, is, is like the low market cap that I try to look for. But I like this project. I think they're going to do a very good job at like essentially digitizing anything and everything where, you know, Luxo is more aimed towards um, luxury and, and to be the actual chain to do it. This is going to be a company on the chain, I believe. Um, but yeah, so... This is how people will find it. They type in the company name, they'll find it in here. But all these companies, it's hard to find good ones. And a lot of people will tell you crappy companies, they'll do very well. Um, and in, in the bull market, it seems like everything is pumping in the long run. So like, look at this, you can put money in any of these projects. A week ago, every single one of these projects are in the green a week ago, right? So, um, but you can start going to the lower market cap ones and uh, these altcoins don't start pumping and you could lose a lot of money. And here's the scary part with the altcoins, right? So 
some of these coins could pump up to you know a, you know, they could launch at a, you know 60 million market cap and pump up to a you know 60 billion dollar market cap and then it could take a 90 percent drop right e easily so just like the 90s.com people like to describe the bitcoin to 90s.com which yeah there's similarities but i've been hearing the similarities in 2014 16 and, and 2021 i i wasn't around in 14 but i i i was familiar enough with bitcoin i just misunderstood what the technology was but i i remember the 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 drama around it um but uh then i experienced it in you know 2017 um and now it's happening again, and that's fine because it's very similar. There's a lot of companies that aren't worth what they're worth, and uh, like I think, for example, I know people are going to hate on me, but I don't really care. Um, I don't think XRP. I hate. I don't like them, but I think they have value for the current fiat system. I don't like how they created the company. They they pretty much put the middle finger to uh, the the user, which is you, and they made it seem like it's a good thing. Um. Tron, I don't like Tron, sorry guys. They copied and pasted their white paper. They don't have any original thought. So this is an $8 billion market cap, $9 billion market cap that I hope won't be around. I just don't like seeing companies that lie, cheat, and steal. And uh, Tron lied, cheat, and steals. <laughs> so um, he even called his own company a shitcoin. There's people that like him and stuff. I get it, whatever, but... Tron is a working network and nobody's using it. Um, you know, so there's there's big companies that are up top. Bit uh, Bit Connect was a Ponzi scheme. It was li literally a Ponzi scheme, and I think it was in the top ten uh, in 2017. So just because it's in the top ten doesn't mean it's a it's a legit project, right? And by the way, Tron. Um, oh my gosh, twelve cents. That's that's cool. Good for Tron. Um, I know people that are invested in Tron, by the way. So. I, I don't. I want it to do well because they are invested in it, but I don't want it to do well because I don't want companies like Tron leading the industry. You know, I want companies like Polkadot and you know, I want, I want Bitcoin. Like I want good companies. You know, Chainlink. I want companies with original thoughts and whatever. Right? I really like Filecoin. Um, you guys on my channel were shilling this to me like crazy. Um, for a long time um but anyway so this is that's the conversation i kind of need to have with people just be very 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 careful there's a lot of crazy stuff out there. there's a lot to know um exchanges versus wallets what you're getting into um and by the way these this could swing here's what could happen all right i'm just going to play a scenario out i'm not saying this is going to happen but l let me just paint a scenario because this could happen bitcoin's at fifty-seven thousand dollars right now People, a lot of people think $100,000 is the, where it's going to hit this year. But let's say it hit $100,000, and then in November it gets to $100,000, or, like, or beginning December, let's say. And then let's say from December 1st to the end of December, it went from $100,000 to $360,000, right? That's a big gain. Then people FOMO in, and then it goes from $360,000, it crashes all the way down to $40,000 or $30,000. In the next two years, it crashes back down to 30k. That could happen. I don't think it's going to do 30k, but it might dip down to these levels. If it gets like two, three hundred thousand dollars, we might in another. It might crash down to a 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar Bitcoin. So you have to prepare for those type of swings. And if and if Bitcoin does that, then you know a coin that went from 60. You know if Bitcoin goes from, you know, uh, nine trillion to one trillion. Then there's gonna be coins that go from, you know, 60 billion to 30 million, right? Over 99% drops. It happens all the time. So, um, you know, even you know, Tron was at like 26 cents. I think that's when I sold it. I sold Tron at like 26 cents. By the way, 26 cents back in this is like four or five years ago. It hasn't even hit their all-time high yet again. If the company is so good, how is it that Bitcoin blew past its $20,000 all-time high? Ethereum passed its uh, $1,400 all-time all high. Uh, Binance Coin passed its $23 all-time high. Um, XRP, whatever. Um, Polkadot, well, it launched at five bucks. Um, Cardano, well, it's like passing its all-time high right now. Um, Uniswap launched at like five bucks. Uh, Litecoin passing its all-time high. 
uh, chain link is at its all time high, right? So how come all these companies are doing all time highs, but yet Tron, which is an amazing company, is still like half under half of what its all time high was. So the number one YouTuber, by the way, in crypto, just I'm not going to say his name, but the number one YouTuber when it comes to followers, this was his favorite project less than 12 months ago. He was telling everybody to buy this project. And now he almost doesn't say it at all. So you just got to be careful who you follow. You got to be careful this industry. You know, this whole, you know, I, I've been thinking about creating a fund, figuring out how to do that. Um, and I think the reason why people get in trouble when they do those is because people think they're going to be millionaires overnight. And I was like, well, if I create one, I'm going to have a sheet that's going to be like, if you want to lose all your money and you want to put the middle finger to yourself and you don't give a crap about, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to write, but people are definitely going to be aware that they're gambling the crap out of their money. If, if I start taking money from people, um, but, uh, anyway, I heard about a 17 year old kid that was doing it and I was like, what? The kid's not even 18. Well then I should be able to do it anyways. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the conversation that needs to be had. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I didn't do it as well as I probably should have or gone over as things as well as I should have. But this industry is crazy. You're going to need to learn a lot. First thing I would do is learn, um, watch uh, the Andreas Antonopoulos. What is Bitcoin? Um, the second thing I would do, so type that in Andreas Antonopoulos, what is Bitcoin? For sure. Watch these two videos, the one four years ago, both of them. Um, they're amazing. Um, and then also Mike. Maloney. I have this in my Discord. I also have this on my website, skyscrapercrypto.com. So, um, but anyways, um, and I also have it in my Discord in the help section. Um, but these right here, Hidden Secrets of Money. There's 10 episodes. I know they're 10 episodes or like 30 minutes long, but do yourself a favor and learn about how the United States economy and the world economy works, not the United States, the world economy works. Learn how money works. This is the best series I've ever seen in my entire life. I've seen episodes one through 10, probably like a few, I don't know, I wouldn't say a few dozen, but maybe 10, 15 times or so. Um, I, I put it on the background all the time just because he explains it so well. I, I want to rip off his verbiage essentially because the way he explains it is just, it, it's, it's done very, very well. Um, so he's done all of his graphics himself too. And so he, 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 anyways, those two things, watch those two things. Um, you know, the Andreas Antonopoulos and then it's Michael Oni. So you kind of understand. He explains why Bitcoin is necessary, by the way. This is what you're going to learn in the 10 episodes. At the end of the 10 episodes, you're going to be like, yeah, this is why... You'll know why you'll want to invest in Bitcoin. I'm not telling anyone to invest. You do your own thing. I'm not a financial advisor, right? I don't... Um, but, uh, um, but I believe after you see these 10 episodes, then you will be sold on why Bitcoin is needed. And by the way, he talks about Bitcoin in episode... Eight. He also talks about a couple of companies though, so I don't really blame him, but I, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, um, then once you do this, then, uh, then learn what Bitcoin is, or you can do it vice versa, learn what Bitcoin is and then read these and then watch these. But after that, I feel like you should have a kind of a good understanding of why Bitcoin is needed and what Bitcoin is. Then I'd say just like listen to everything I said today on this video. Be careful what what, what app you use. Um, be careful where you buy it. Be careful leaving it on exchanges because exchanges could get hacked and you could lose your funds. Um, but I think that we're getting into an age now where crypto is being backed and it's a little more safer. So until you learn what wallets are, you know maybe you want to kind of stick with exchanges temporarily until you kind of get more comfortable with the crypto ecosystem. Be aware that yes, Bitcoin has problems. It's okay. You don't need to, it's not perfect yet. We are we are still building the program. It's still being coded. It's been, it's 10 years old. You know, the internet was was thought about in the thirties and well thought about way before that, but started actually being tested and figured out in the thirties and forties. It wasn't until the sixties till the first hello message almost got sent. Um, it wasn't until the late seventies, the first computers being built wasn't until the late eighties until the internet was being built. Wasn't until, uh, the nineties until the internet was realized 
Um, and it wasn't until the 2000s that the value was seen. So that was the internet's path. Right now we're 11 years into Bitcoin's path. So do you think you're late? Do you think you're late to the game? Do you think, you know, I still think we're early adopters. Until the until Bitcoin is used as much as PayPal, as much as you know eBay, as much as like eBay or Amazon or or PayPal or or you know the internet, email, and unless Bitcoin is in our lives as much as those things are, um, we're not mass adopted yet, right? Um, I see hundreds of people between the ages of like eighteen and thirty. Um, I train them with my company. Everybody knows I'm into Bitcoin. Well, like one out of 200 people know what Bitcoin is. So it's for the younger generation, yet most of the younger generation still have no idea what the heck it is. So I still see it as like, we are still so new into this. Um, so it's okay to put $50 into Bitcoin, a paycheck. Um, just think about this. Whatever money you're spending, 10 exit. Right? You spend 10 bucks on something, uh, it actually costs you $100, right? Just think about it in terms of that way. And just know that $15, if I put it into Bitcoin, that would have been $150. And that's only if it reaches gold's market cap, by the way. And, I'll be, and I believe it's going to go way higher than that. And so do many other people. So, but you know, you do you. Do you. Um, but I guess that's it. It's over. I'm like an hour and 13 minutes. I got to end the stream. Um, but uh, appreciate you guys watching this and uh, 